And you can just stand over here for now, but for coming and going, when I move this dog coming and going, I'm going to have you come up this end so that you can actually see him. So let's look at this dog a little bit. You know, everybody's a judge, right? You're judging whether you're buying, looking, or whatever. If you're going to judge a dog, you're not supposed to have any acquaintance with him first or whatever. And so first thing is you just look at that dog and you ask yourself, well, what's the breed type? Is it a male or is it a bitch? Male. All about male? Good job. And then we see how the dog is posed without the handler. Rather amazing. He did that all by himself. Almost makes you not want to have to pay a handler. <laughs> sure can't love that see? And you go to a lot of other breeds you don't have to. So then we take a look at this dog and we ask ourselves, well, let's make an educated guess about how all his parts are put together. What's the first impression? Well, how do you like the shoulders? Yeah, nice. When he just stands there, see, he's pretty, pretty close to that 45 in outward appearance. There's actually a lot of discussion going on around the world as to what the ideal shoulder is for a trotting dog. And they're coming more to the conclusion that it's probably closer to 115 degrees than it is to the 120. But that's beside the point. And I know Mary Ellen likes them to stand straight. You'll notice this guy stands just a hair east west. That would be my educated guess that this is probably a pretty good trotting dog. Most good trotters naturally stand east-west, not just in German Shepherds, but in horses and other animals. So then I look at, at this dog and I decided he was masculine and I decided his shoulders looked pretty good. When you say that you're, you're talking about the angle, the degree of the angle, could you actually go on the side of the dog and show me where oh, the... I can do it with the... Here, I can do it. Yes, yeah, I can do it with the... Right here. I can do it with this pointer. I'm going right here. Yeah. That's your 90 degrees? That's my, that's my uh, 90 degree shoulder. And then, if I was looking at that back leg, back leg, you know, they always talk about that other 90 degree. That other 90 degree is not visible from this side. If I want to see, well, now it is. If he puts some square like this, then the 90 degree is here. And then this is parallel to this, and that's parallel to that. But ordinarily, when the dog is in a natural stance by himself, walk him up. If you want to see that 90, you're going to have to walk around on this side. And it's beautiful. He has a 90. I want to guess this is a pretty good dog. <laughs> I want to guess he's better than average anyway. Okay. And then we talk about, well, obviously he may be slightly doubled, which obviously is cheating. <laughs> Which is cheating, which is cheating for the temperament test. So when the temperament test comes, go on down there and then just walk out and double hand to get out of here. So ordinarily when you do that temperament test, stop, stop. You, you watch these guys, when they are, they're coming at you. These handlers got those leads. If they can, they're gonna come out and take that dog and wrap it around your legs and pretend it's your friend. <laughs> So you have them stop out there, and I actually have, I don't have time today, but you go to our Pair Club website, there's a two and a half minute video, I've got it on here, I won't show it to you, but Carmen does a really nice job of explaining how to do a loose lead temperament test. Go look at it, if there's time I'll show it to you on here. So the approach is, you're a friendly stranger, don't be afraid to talk to the dog. Hi buddy, how are you? Is this a good one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, every, everybody starts judging somewhere. Sometimes you need a little help. Okay. There is she? Will you get out of here? All right. So the approach is you talk to them, and it's a touch and go, or it just brush the dog. I'm going to go up there. I'm not going to look into any eyes. I'm not going to bend over. I'm just going to go up. I'm going to touch the dog, and I'm, or, brush, or brush the dog, and I'm going to get away. Anything else can put you at risk. You get your head down in there, you start slapping that dog around, good luck. Because temperament in German Shepherds is on a wide, wide spectrum. You've got really lovely dogs that like to go to hospitals and be people's friends. You've got dogs that are just one side of a trained killer. 
<laughs> and they are aggressive and they are outgoing. And that doesn't mean they can't be a show dog, but it means you don't want to be the one that goes up and punches them or gives them the arm. That's right. Yeah, so it's, hi buddy, how That's are right. you? Touch and go. Is this done before or after the, the exam that you actually do the training? Which one? Oh yeah, the temper test is before the exam. First, first contact with the dog is the touch and go temperament test. So you do this and then you go back and show me the teeth and do a full And exam. then I'm going to come back here and, and I'm going to say a lot of times when I'm trying to save time, I'll do it all at once. it would be touch, go, step back and I say show me the teeth. I usually tell them show me the biting of the teeth. I want to get my hands in this mouth as little as I absolutely have to. <laughs> have to. Now a lot of times you'll see me put my hand on the collar. That's just because I'm trying to save my life. I'm making sure that if the handler doesn't have control, I do. And I look, and that's good, and that's good, and that's good. And now, when I go to look for the testicles, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll make sure the dog knows where I am, put my hand on his collar. I'm going to run my hand down his back so he knows I'm here. This is no shock. Make sure my hands aren't cold. I'm kidding about the cold. <laughs> I'm checking, checking to make sure he has two testicles. And then I'm going to ask to see him coming and going. And uh, well, I'm going to have him from here. We'll do it twice. Those of you down that end can watch this dog coming and going because I imagine he's pretty good just based on looking at him. Yeah, he's pretty good. He twists a little hot one. And you know why he twists? Because he's pulling. Now when he goes loose, very nice, elbows in, he looks pretty good. And, th and I'm sure you're gonna go down and look at dogs with Jimmy in a few minutes, right? Yes. Yeah, and they can run these dogs for you and you'll get a better feel about how, for all the, where all the parts fall as the dog goes. How loose do you like your lead when you're doing that loose temperament test? Uh, just a few feet is good. You get them out there on a 10, 12 foot feet, uh, lead no one has control of that dog anymore you want to make sure that that dog goes nuts it's the handler that takes the brunt of the experience <laughs> yeah a couple of feet's plenty and touch and go all right let's sit down and then we'll go talk about dogs thank you Kim. yeah oh thank you i appreciate that Oh. Yes, I did. They're on a table up there. I want to grab some coffee. No, maybe I'm not going to grab coffee. That's all right. Okay. You still here? We just had a fun little I o'clock session. All right, folks, let's go. I got, you know, I'm an old man. I'm going to be dead in no time. You got to get up here. Let's go. I haven't got time. Either join me or get the hell out of here. It's just like when I used to teach high school. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, life never changes. They just get bigger and older. All right, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dave Pink. I don't know if you've been in Shepherds. I've been in it. I'm not, I used to count it in years. I now count it in decades. I think I'm on the sixth decade. You know, I'm actually very fortunate to be here with you. They let me out of the home. <laughs> The German Shepherd Dog Club of America couldn't get anybody else to do this, and so here I am. So we said that you are always judging dogs, and we're always doing first impressions, and then we get into the standard and the nuts and the bolts. But it doesn't take a long time to determine whether a dog is a good one or a bad one. So if I looked at this dog, what would I say? Male, male. What I say about the pigment, masculinity, and I can see that nice overline on the back all the way from the top, smooth all the way to the back. He's lifting a little in front. You see the beautiful crossover underneath. Why is he left in front? Because this devious athlete's got him on the old chain and the, and the collar. What else do you notice about him? See this foot? 
And you know, good dogs, when they, when they put that out, they twist that a little bit and then they put it back down straight. And he's a lot, a lot of dog to like. And if you look back here, maybe he twists this just a touch, but that's a very, very nice masculine dog. And we don't see him from the side real well, but you know what? From here, eh, I can't show it to you that well. The distance from the two feet from the center should be the same in the front as it is from the rear. Let's go forward one. Oh, oh, oh. Let's try. What did I do? Oh, no. Mary Ellen! <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, we say that this is a gating breed, and people have been judging it on the gating forever. This is an old dog. This goes back to the 70s. This is not a perfect dog. You can look him up on the web, and I'm going to see if I can get him to gate for you. And because he goes back to the 70s, he's a little different in structure. He doesn't quite, quite his depth of body isn't as much. Fairly athletic dog. He doesn't have a collar and a chain around his neck. Let's see if we can get him to move. Top line's level. His top line level, not a problem for a working dog, and not a problem for a dog that's off lead. I like it. You like it. All right. You should be a judge. Oh, that's right, you are. <laughs> Let me just see. Oh, there he goes. Now, this goes for a long time, and because I said I, was, I would, wouldn't keep you for more than an hour, I won't run all of this, but I just want you to get a feel for what it is people think about this breed. He's a little kicking up in the rear, but for his time, and people still go back and look at this, this one's on YouTube. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you the name of a website here in a minute that you wanna go to. You can find it it's in Australia, for heaven's sakes, and it's got everything you ever wanted to know about German Shepherd dogs, and I think it's the best one I've seen, bar none. It's lewisdonald.com, and I don't know if I, if I can speed him up so I don't have to show you all this or not. Let me see if I can. Maybe not. Oh, I can't. So, that was enough of him gating. That one you look up on YouTube if you want because of my time constraints. Why did I put this slide in here? I put this in here to talk about attitude. A lot, of, a lot of people have different attitudes about this breed. Some are negative. We see a lot of that crap that goes on. The first thing they say when they look at a dog, they talk about what's wrong with it instead of what's right with it. We see a lot of that in judges. Some, some judges are going through the motion in the ring as they're on their way to their next breed or whatever. And some of them just don't play no. But it's, it's all right. But I want your attitude to be unlike this dog going to the vet. I want your attitudes to be positive regarding everything we do. And so I'm going to show you a simple system of evaluating dogs that works for me because I'm a reasonably simple individual. And I look at a German Shepherd and I ask myself whether it's I'm trying to differentiate between two of them or a hundred of them. It just doesn't matter. It's the same process over and over again. I'm going to ask myself, does it look like a German Shepherd? Does it act like a German Shepherd? And does it move like a Jepherd, German Shepherd? <coughs> Excuse me. Two of those three things are pretty much under the control of you as a judge. And if you got a lot of dogs, you just start grouping them. Yes, no, eh, maybe, because as the judging goes on, they could change category, right? <laughs> Dog comes in the ring, you look at it, boy, that's a really lovely animal, and the longer it goes, it starts to fall apart, and the parts don't work like they used to, and some other dog that you were looking at earlier, it's now looking better than it did. Now, next, see what I've got for another slide here. Oh, I just put him in here to show you the kind of thing we're looking for. Do you like that dog in motion? I like that dog in motion. Notice the head carriage. Oh, don't. Notice the head carriage. What? <laughs> this is really touchy, isn't it? Oh, we didn't even do my first slide. I'll go back to that in a minute. You know. I forgot to tell you, but I got hung up over there, that the reason that it's so important that you pay attention to this standard for this breed is because this isn't any breed. This is the greatest dog in the universe. This is the most versatile, intelligent dog there is. You ask yourself, what can you do with a St. Bernard or a Minpin <laughs> or an Ivory Setter? They're all good dogs for different, you know, the Minpin you carry around in a purse. Irish Setter goes out and looks for birds. 
Uh, you know, what, what does the Newfie do? Oh, the Newfie goes swimming and rescues people that don't drown anymore. <laughs> so these are all wonderful animals. And I love a lot of different breeds. I, you know, Norwich Terrier, there's another good one. But if you want to talk about dogs that can do, come on. Really? It wasn't you, Mary Ellen, it is me. Yeah. All right. If you want to talk about a dog that can do anything, it can lead the blind, it can jump out of airplanes, it can uh, visit the hospital, it can uh, be trained to kill you on a heartbeat and nobody else can handle the dog. So there's a wide variation, but it's, uh, you know, as Mary Ellen said, no temperament, no dog. Now I know everybody gives lip service to that, and I don't have time to talk about all the enemies of the breed. That's a Charles Mardez saying. I love that one, enemies of the breed. And everybody thinks it's the other guy that's the enemy of the breed, whether it's their breeding, their handling, their showing, their training. The only other people that are enemies of the breed to keep those spooks and train them and send them out so they can stand for the judge. That's somebody else, right? Ooh, deadling silence, amazing. <laughs> ah, this dog. Oh, no! All right, this dog. Look at the overline, nice hard back, nice smooth from the tip of the ears all the way back and down. A little curl in the tail, we don't care. Remember I said that a, a really balanced dog, the distance from here to his front foot and the distance from here to his rear foot should be about the same. Uh, it shows he's in balance and is most likely to have a harmonious, smooth motion. And on this guy we see, he kicks the foot up here, he's got his head out, his foot comes out about to the end of his nose, and it is... Close to the ground, close to the ground. And that dog probably moves like that at all three speeds described in the standard. We would hope. Next one. German Shepherd Dog Standard. Did everybody get a copy of my handout? Yes. If you don't have one, let me pass them back and take one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the standard today. Send a few of those out there. Yeah, pass those out. Would you for anybody who wants one? That's all I have of them. I need one for me. I didn't pass those out, so I don't know. Yours. So, let's, it's coming. Kent's passing them out till they run out. I had no idea how many people would be here. More of you showed up than I thought would be. There's a lot of you repeats. You know, it's, it's good, because one of the questions that comes to my mind, how many slow learners are in here? <laughs> I've been doing this since the early 2000s, for heaven's sakes. And then the other thing that always comes to my mind, you know, people that might benefit from a lively discussion of what a correct dog is. Yep, not here again. That's life. <laughs> All right, they're coming around. Take a look at this standard with me. I'm going to just highlight just a couple of spots on here. Well, look at the standard. Did Mary Ellen give you a written standard? You got a written standard somewhere. That's fine. You can look at that one. I covered the temperament thing, right? What I did at the very thing where I gave you the introduction to the dog, I highlighted only the positive things about the dog and I took out all of the negatives. I won't read them to you, but I, you know, I didn't want you to be like that shepherd going to the vet. I want you to just think about the dog positively. You know, everybody's dog, you need to think about this when you're judging, everybody had their first dog, right? And so some of these people, they might be in the ring for the very first time with their first dog. And so you better have just a touch of empathy and understanding to make sure that that's a good experience for that individual because they may be somebody who's very active in this breed, the next president, the next person judging intersex, the next person with the highest scoring performance dog, whatever. And it's very important that those people are treated with a little bit of kids' gloves initially. All right, going through this standard. Mary Ellen covered temperament. She covered size. Flip the page with me. Oh, I need to talk about handlers when it comes to this standard. Oh, yeah. Your job is to interpret the standard. The handler's job, and let's face it, some of them are very highly intelligent, devious, cunning athletes. And their clients handle, hire them to show you the dog so that you can't find the faults. And so that you will think that dog is fabulous and put it up. So if you ask for a loose lead and they don't show it to you and you don't enforce it, life is good, they win and we go on. 
If it's some color it didn't used to be, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Especially when they advertise it. Yeah, when they advertise it. Or when you breed to it, it was black and red, and your puppies turn out black and white. <laughs> you know, that's an exciting day, isn't it? Anyhow, all fairness to handlers, most of them do a really good job, but be well aware they may be smiling at you and talking to you. Or if you're talking about buying dogs and breeding dogs, most of them have a point of view that... Yeah, they're selling it one way or another, right? You might want to get a second opinion. You might want to become an individual thinker. <laughs> Do your own thing. Okay, color. Mary Ellen colored that. Comes out of a bottle. You know, where's the best place to get color? Lady Clairol. DNA, not Lady Clairol. Who said Lady Clairol? <laughs> You want to breed that color into the dogs, and you don't have to go through all of that nonsense. The same reason you want to breed good temperament into dogs. Then you don't have to spend all this time outside the ring. Oh, I wonder if he'll stand. <laughs> and then he does. You go, oh, thank God. And a lot of times it's courtesy of a wonderful handler that was holding that dog like that. You know, when I first came in this breed, the temperament test was you just went out there and you held that thing like a rock. And if the judge touched it, that was good enough. And he flipped your mouth open. And uh, nah, if it had a good bite, three, four missing teeth, nothing. You could be a, you could be a champion in no problem, no time. And as either Jimmy or Mary Ellen said, you know, we decided to make that a priority. We'd make it a priority that teeth would get better. We would make it a priority that temperament would overall get better. And it has, for the most part. Dentition is excellent. OFA, we've decided it was enough of those damn elbows and hips falling off those dogs all the time. And for the most part, just by a concentrated effort from people, it got better. And anything in this standard can get better if the people in the breed, all of them, decide that it's a necessity. Temperament, angulation, movement, working ability, and so on. All right, where am I here before I get done a tirade? My time will run out. I'm down to gate. The, ne you think, the unique thing about this gate in this standard, and this is a wonderful standard. This is really well written. It just makes you wonder how if everybody, the Canadians, the Australian, the Japanese, the Germans, the Italians, everybody's got the same standard. How the hell can the dogs look so different? If you gave a blueprint to a contractor, a 10 of them, you'd expect all 10 houses to look the same, wouldn't you? We give this blueprint out all over the place and the dogs look dramatically different. I'm not sure how you cure that, but I'm well aware of it. All right. Oh, I didn't finish gate. Very important in this standard, especially when you think about judging. This standard, in detail, describes the dog at how many speeds. Good answer, three. Describes the motion of the dog at a walk, at a trot, and at a very fast trot. So when you see a dog in the ring, in order to evaluate it correctly, what do you need to see? All of, All of those. When was the last that time that happened to you? Mm -hmm. An all breed show. You know, quite frankly, if you take a dog and walk them at a medium trot on a loose lead, emphasis loose lead, you will probably need to, you will probably know everything about the motion of that animal that you need to know. You'll be able to make a really high percentage educated guess as to how the dog would function at the other speed. Yeah, at an all breed show, you've only got two and a half minutes to evaluate each dog. It's your in and you're out and you've got to get it right. And that used to be true of American specialties, of American nationals. And now things have become rather unique to the point is where people are falling asleep. <laughs> How many dogs an hour are we doing? How much time are you looking at an empty ring? Not so important to you, it's getting important to me. Days running out, I keep them moving. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't understand it, how we can't do 20, 25 dogs an hour. <laughs> what happens, I think, is that the task expands to fill the time allowed. And so if we allow three, four days for a national, what do we do? 
with the entries don't get bigger. We have 300 dogs here in confirmation. Oh, and by the way, performance people, 305, way to go. Uh-huh, that's, that's an awesome trend. So if you've got 300 dogs here total, you don't have to be a genius to say, how many days would it take to judge those 300? Five? Ah, no, four. I'm telling you, if you did it in three, it's 100 dogs a day. In my youth, if I had a good leg, I could do all 300 for you in one day. Helen could do all 300 of you in one day. Jimmy could do all 300 in a day. We used to have nationals. How many dogs? 1,200, 1,300. How many days? Three. Could we go back to that? I know we're not as fast as we used to be. Probably uh, athletically, physically, cognitive, whatever. We're a hair slower than we were, but we could definitely take another day or two out of this. All right. Enough for the standard. That brings me to numbers, dog. Let's see if I get to him. I have a question. Question. This dog here. Yeah. Show me a level back. I see a firm back. I see a beautiful picture, but I don't see the level anywhere. Now you're not going to see. Yeah, I know you call for a level back, but so tre the trends are today that, uh, what am I looking oh. For? What am I looking for in a top line? Well, it doesn't have to be as extreme, extreme as this. He could come almost to here. And that's what you're looking for. So if I see a level back, like on that first slide you showed moving. I showed the mo dog in motion level. That would be a tough win today. I just wanted to show you the harmonious, free-flowing, smooth gait. Yes. Yeah. So this, which is preferred. Oh, wow, uh, the other dog, do we? Yeah, we would need to take the other, take, we would have to take the other dog and pose him like this. It isn't, fr isn't fair to compare the pose dog to the pose dog. If they're moving, do you want your top line to actually be level? Do you want it to slow? Uh, well, in motion, it, he should, if he puts his head forward right. and he's not held up on a leash, then he should come closer to level. He may still have his back end down a little bit. That's what wins these days. If he actually comes up level, level, like in a good trotting working dog, he'd probably be penalized in the show dog, in the show ring. Hmm? He should be? Not necessarily. Well, to the I'm standard, asking, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have to be. To judge your breed correctly. You can do whichever one you like. <laughs> That's not well, right. well, you know, a lot of it's common sense and it's trade-offs, right? Because there aren't going to be dogs that are so great that it's going to come down to this little finite where, where the top line is. If you, yes. It says the withers are higher yes. than and yes. sloping into. Yes. Yeah, so they can have a slope. Where the level back is, I don't well, this part's level. That's a straight line from the top to here all the way to the end of his tail. We're level in here. Yeah, you want, you're talking about, par you're talking about parallel to the ground. We can argue later. In fact, I'll be around. I'm not arguing, I'm asking. No, well, I'm going to tell you, I don't know the answer exactly to your question. But I'll show you winners from losers if you want to watch dogs with me on uh, okay. winner specials. Okay. Friday this week. I'll be sitting, come on and watch, we'll look, dog, we'll look at dogs together. But I do breeds where, where they slope in the other direction. Like he's yes. almost up on his toes because he's looking for his own. All right, this dog. Only reason I put this, do this uh, dog up here is to tell you What's the website you want to go to to know everything about, you, about dogs, German Shepherds, that you could ever know? Guy in Australia. What's website that? is fabulous. It has articles. It has videos. Whether you agree with them or disagree with them, go there. Give you a point. He does. <laughs> I'll discuss that with you, too. <laughs> yeah, I know you don't like that one. I like that. Even from the historical perspective of the dog, you go all the way back. You look at one man's point of view. If you don't like that, read Linda Shaw's book. A lot of people don't like that one. Uh, if you don't like that, read the Illustrated Standard from the German Shepherd Dog Club of America. Didn't get your copy yet? I've been waiting for mine since I had hair. You stay tuned. Oh, yes. That last night, the dog's got, in my estimation, comes along. Uh, he set under himself quite well. It looks like the scapula is pretty good. Well. And usually when I've seen that, you see more of a stern. And I don't see a great amount of a stern. Um, One more here. Yeah. yeah. You know the truth that all these posed dogs is? 
Till you move them, you really never know. You can take a dog and pose that sucker and make them look fabulous. You can take a dog that looks kind of weird set up. It moves, the parts will come together. All right. I gave you the number dog, because in my two and a half minute, just look at the dog. Where did he go? Oh, yeah. I use him to make a quick evaluation. And I just start at the head that Mary Ellen talked about that's 50, 50, 50. It's half as wide as it is long. And there should be a pronounced, where are we? Nice little stop in here. These are parallel. You'll see most of the dogs these days, have, they're not quite in parallel anymore. And what do I, what, the two, or oh, the two, he should have two ears. He should have two almond eyes. He should have 42 teeth. He should have 90 degree angle here. He should be how deep in body? Well, our dogs tend to have gotten a little deeper. They used to be a little rangier, a little lighter, a little smaller, and a better working dog. As Mary Ellen pointed out, when they get bigger and bulkier, not quite as good an agile working dog. So when you're judging these and you're looking at them, it's going to appear to be 50-50 in here. And if you take away for the coat, now he'd be maybe 45 Pasterns, 25, they've got, he has to have a nice springy pastern. He can't have these straight dobe pasterns. You know, like 25 degree pasterns, look at him grit back there. See me later. Oh, I, uh, now I have to look on my laptop. I don't know who he is. 45, 45, 90. What's the four by four that I put down there? This is a dog that has four feet on the floor, not three and a hock. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Let's get down to ringside tomorrow. Let's start looking for those three and a hock. And sometimes it's perpetuated by the handler, and the dog actually has fairly correct structure. Whoever said, just walk them forward, have them stand by themselves, and you'll know a whole lot about the dog if in doubt as to where the parts belong and fall in. And the two here is for the double coat. Now, we got in a real nasty habit with coats in this breed. When I got in this breed, it was a uh, rinse and show. Ooh, not now. <laughs> You've got to allow another day or two or three or a week's preparation to get that dog ready for the show ring. You are going to need, oh, maybe a big truck, a blow dryer, mild container of pharmaceuticals or drugs, whichever you call them. Uh, you're going to need some dyes, some trimmers. You're going to need a whole lot of crap to start building that show dog to make them competitive. You better start rounding up at least a couple of double handlers because you're going to be able to show this dog yourself. <laughs> and you need good double handlers. Crappy double handler can make your dog look atrocious. One of the best things you can do is go look at your dog on video. Look at yourself if you're judging. Look at yourself on video. Look at your double handlers on video and see if they're in the right place when that dog is out moving around. You would be surprised. You'd be surprised. I learned a lot about my judging, and I'm not going to tell you it's perfect by any means. You just take what I tell you with a grain of salt. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, I'm absolutely endorsed by no one. I tell people, trust but verify and check again. And my... My view on any one thing can be changed. If you can show me where I'm wrong, I'd be happy to change it. The yellow lines on this dog are for the proportions of the dog. How do we like them? We tend to like them here too long. Need to shorten them up a little bit. But eight and a half to 10, eight to 10, 23 inch, nice long flat croup, that continuous line all the way down to the end of that tail. And it's not on here, but it'd really be nice if that tail didn't do what? Slap around on the hot. So we got a problem in the breed. Watch the tails in the next three days when you're looking at dogs. Needs to be a full functional rudder. 120, we just talked about that over there. 90, if he stands on all four, he's 90. And then just by looking at him the first time, like I did with the dog over there, he looked like a yes to me, but I put him in a category. This guy looks like a potential yes to me. And so I would put him there. And I put this diagram on here, not to get into the details, but oh, no, no, no. But to show you this length back here, this is the problem we have. 
This is, this is extremely a little shorter than you're going to see. But when that hot, hot gets out here like this, you got big problems. That's extreme angulation. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, this extreme angulation thing is one of the big problems that we're... And we're doing a pretty good job. Do you like some of those futurity and maturity dogs overall? And even the puppies? Pretty decent. A little, those two to four bitch puppies even had some lovely animals in. So some of our things are coming back. You know, we have challenges in one way. We are declining in numbers. Futurity registrations are way down. Entries are way down. But quality overall at least isn't going down. It may be actually picking up, stabilizing, and getting better for those dogs that are produced by the ASDP. ASDP. What's that? American show dog people. We are a unique group unto ourselves. <laughs> and we're pretty sure that we're better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, temperament, most important. I think we've covered some of that, so I won't spend too much time on temperament. Because a really good shepherd can do almost anything. Unlike, you pick the breed. Huh? I want you to ask yourself, how many breeds are there that you could parachute out of a cargo plane with and expect to land on the ground and have the dog get up saying, all right, let's go. This is one of those don't try that at home things. But that's the kind of temperament and stability you're looking in a dog, for in a dog. If you can't take that dog, on a leash and walk them through O'Hare Airport on a Friday night and the dog just enjoys the trip, probably not the stability you're looking for. I'm not suggesting you train your dog to jump out of planes. Oh, here I'm going to show you just a little bit of this if I can. This is the current, oh, come on. Uh-oh, uh-oh, something went wrong. Back. There we go. Stay tuned, it's going to come, I think. This is Gary, current Seeger. Now, I'm not showing you in his show thing. I'm just showing you work in the sport of Schutzhund. Key word there, sport. This dog is trained to do this, but it shows that he has a good mind, that he's a, probably a pretty functional animal. This is a game for the dog. He's wa wagging his tail. Does that mean he wouldn't bite you? No, sure, he'd probably bite you. But he has good temper and they can call him out. He's not still hanging on the guy's throat and you can't get him off of there. Also shows trainability and a good temperament. Look at this, you can take him off lead and he'll go function all by himself and come back. <laughs> all right, enough of him. Oh, this is a really nice video. I don't have time to show you this either. This runs about five minutes. I'll show you a little bit of this. This shows trainability of German Shepherd dogs. A lot of this stuff's on YouTube. You can go out there and, and look it up yourself. I'll just run a couple of minutes of it for you. The end of this thing's got dogs putting away the trash, cleaning the house. Oh, look at that. Uh, I cannot tell you too much how important temperament in the animal is. And it's the thing that you really can't tell judging. You can tell extremes. Is the dog frightened? Is it extreme? Does it have a high potential to be a really well-trained animal? No, you can't tell that judging. You know, there's... When I'm judging if that sucker's his eyes aren't rolling and he stands on a loose lead and he doesn't bite me or he doesn't leak on me and he's well trained, well then he's probably going to pass the temperament test. <laughs> it's a dog that can do anything. It actually makes a good bird dog if you want to train it. Okay. Enough of showing you how trainable these guys are. I was looking, there's, there's one on here with six dogs walking loose lead downtown New York. I wanted you to see that. That's just amazing.
nice black long coat. We have a lot of differences in type. But you can't be overangulated and be a cripple and be a working dog. You can be a highly trained dog with a good brain. Here he is. Don't try that in your neighborhood. All right, enough of that. Got to move on. All right, here's Carmen's temperament test. I'm going to go past this one. It's on the Parent Club website. It's two and a half minutes long. It's not too different from what I just did. Right, Carmen? Right. Uh, I'm not, I did that. All right, I want to look at some dogs in motion. And I'm going to have to indulge you for a second while I try and hook up a DVD that's got what I want on here. I didn't have the software to embed this in the PowerPoint. And since I don't expect to be doing this very often again, Okay, okay. Come on. Perfect. All right. What showed up? Come on. I apologize. This is from a DVD that was done in 2005. You probably recognize some of these dogs. This thing goes on for a long time. If you want a copy of that, did you see DD over there? I think there's 50 copies of it over there. You can look at it at your leisure when you're snowed in or whatever this winter, if it appeals to you. I want to get to... I'm going to wrap this thing up in case she doesn't come back with a computer. That uh, She's going to grab another computer and see if it'll work better than this one and then I'll let you out of here I have to uh, go down my checklist make sure I didn't me miss anything the standard to hand out problems with the day we covered all of that didn't we temperament working dog I apologize that this doesn't work we covered the temperament test we did the handout oh I had a couple of great sayings from uh, Von Steffen that's on there I'm gonna let you go right after I tell you you know on my way over here today, uh, to this national, all right, oh, you know what I can do. You can't hear me. Hold it. Oh, it's up here. Why isn't it on the screen? See, the, see the challenge? Yeah. So I think it's a computer. You think it's my computer? Yeah. Well, let's skip this. I'm going to go about, I'm going to just take them out. I'm going to go, I'm going right to the end. I have a whole bunch of dogs move, they stand, and then we, we uh, evaluate them, yes, no, maybe, and we make a guess. And then I have them moving, and then I have them in slow motion, so that you can see the differences in those dogs based on how they look standing and how they look in slow-mo. It's pretty, it's quite informative, and it's a lot of well-known dogs. It's on that DVD, you can pick it up on your way out the door, the one that, uh, who has them? Are they in the package? They're in the packet if yes, it's in there. Otherwise, see Dee Dee over here. You've got a lot more of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you want one, you can get it over there and you can go home and look at that thing. And it actually has the audio on it. So now, I'm sorry? Oh, they're free. So, I'm going to tell you what happened to me because this is important. <laughs> I run into this funeral. Oh, God, I had a great picture of a funeral, a military funeral. Anyway, this is massive funeral, and this is big, big hearse. And I'm going, holy mackerel, how can that be? And right behind it's a Cadillac convertible, two German Shepherd dogs sitting in it, looking regally around the world. And I go, that's got to, I got to get out of my car. So I go over to the side, 
start watching this procession go by and I start talking to a guy who knows what's going on. And I said to him, my goodness, who died? Who could be in that massive hearse up there? He says, that is an AKC German Shepherd dog judge. I said, you gotta be kidding me. He said, nope, nope. I said, what's with the two shepherds sitting in the convertible behind them? That looks so regal, looks like a male and a female. He says, they ain't got a hold of that judge and they killed him dead. <laughs> and he says, I'm looking at, the, looking at the funeral procession behind it. And I go, well, that, that's unbelievable. That AKC judge must be extremely popular and well-loved other than those damn dogs. He says, well, no, not exactly. I said, well, do you know the names of the dogs? He says, yeah, that big, good-looking male, he's called the Standard. And that bitch next to him is called Common Sense. <laughs> I said, well, how about all these people that are following on behind? He says, well, I don't give a damn about the judge. They want to know where they can get a dog like that. <laughs> That's it, folks. You're dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.